Hello everyone and welcome back to House Church Bible Study Time. Well guys, I hope and pray that you guys had a, were having a great spring break this week. It's almost the end of the spring break, but still you have a couple more days. So I hope and pray that you will take this time, relax, and have a quality time with your parents and have a lot of fun. And I know some of you, some of you, your spring break begins next week. So if that's the case, then have a great spring break. But if this week was your spring break, then you still have a little more time to enjoy the spring break. But not just, you know, doing for something fun, but have a quality time with your family. If there's something that you want to share with your parents, but you didn't get a chance to do so because you were so busy doing your homework and studying for exam and test and all these activities, maybe now is the time. And then that will be a great starting point of the conversation with your parents and as a, as a family. All right, so today I will dive into the New Testament story, but not quite there yet. So for the last year and a half, we have talked about the Old Testament story. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. That's how the Bible begins. The very first book of the Bible, Genesis 1, chapter 1. And as you know, this is the Bible, right? But the Bible is not just one book. Well, it looks like it's just one book, but it's not one book. There are 66 books of the Bible, and there are 39 books of the Old Testament story and 27 books of the New Testament story. So it's 39 and 27 together, that's 66 books and that's the Bible. So for the last several years, we have talked about the Old Testament story and starting from next week, we will go right into the New Testament story. So it's a, it's a great, it's a, such a blessing that we can go through the entire story of the Bible and the Old Testament and New Story. So the Old Testament is before Jesus comes. So even, even these days, we use BC and AD. I'm pretty sure you have heard about it. Maybe some of you heard about this term. So BC 765 or BC 577, BC 1000, things like that. So BC stands for before Christ, before Jesus is born, before Christ. And AD stands for, not after Christ, it's not in English, but it's in a Latin phrase, different language. And in Latin phrase, it's, it means in the ear of the Lord, in the ear of our Lord. So AD 2022, we are living in 2024. So technically that's AD 2024. So that's how important it is to think about the birth of Jesus Christ. And the New Testament is really about the love of Jesus Christ, and that's the story that we'll be talking about. So I'm excited, and I hope and pray that you are excited as well. But for today, before we dive into the first book of the, uh, in the New Testament story, we just want to talk about this letter that the Apostle Paul wrote to the Christian community, the Christian church in Rome. In Rome right? So before we read the Bible, uh, let me give you the background story. So... Paul didn't visit, didn't get a chance to visit Rome to preach about the gospel and to establish the church. But there were some people from Rome who came and heard of Paul's message about the gospel, about the love of Jesus Christ. They went back to Rome and that's how they began their church and that's how they began to have this Christian community and Christians there. But there were some issues there. So what happened was in the church in Rome, there were about five you know, different groups of people. So these are Jewish people. They think that we are chosen people. We are chosen by God. So they were like those pastors and leaders and teachers. And there were some other non-Jewish people. And there were some rich people. There were some poor people, all you know, different kinds of groups. But what happened was they didn't gather together and worship God but they were separated. So Jewish people, they said we are chosen people, they worship God by themselves. And the non-Jewish people, they worship God by themselves. And the poor people by themselves, and the rich people by themselves. So it was not united. And what happened was the Roman emperor, like the king, the Roman emperor issued this decree order that if you're Jewish people, go out, you are kicked out. So that was the king's, the emperor's order. 
And all the Jewish people got kicked out of Rome. And now they are gone. So imagine yourself that you don't have pastor, you don't have these leaders, you don't have Sunday school teachers, you don't have Bible teachers, you don't have these leaders, and it's all by yourself then would you just leave the church saying we don't have leaders, we don't have pastors, so I can just go home? No, of course not. They loved God, so they loved Jesus, so they followed. They continued to serve God and they continued to have this church gathering, this worship. So one of them stood up and said, I'm going to preach God's word. This is what I've learned. And some people stood up and said, I can you know, be a Sunday school teacher. I can be the Bible teacher. I can be the leader. So they got together. And they worshiped God. They continued to serve the church. And they did a great job. They thought that the Jewish people, the leadership group, will come back soon. But one year has passed, two years, three years, four years. So after so many years, the emperor who gave such an order, now he's gone. So the order is now, it's not there anymore. So all the Jewish people, now they're finally back. And they're greeting each other. Hey, well, have you been? And they're having a great time. And they saw that those non-Jewish people and they were preaching and uh, leading and teaching, they, well, they thought it's great, it's great. But all of a sudden, there was this conflict. The Jewish people who came back now saying, now we are back, so I'm gonna preach. We are continue to serve as teachers. We are continue to serve as leaders. And all these other people, like Jewish people and other people who served the church for the last so many years say, wait, 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 wait a minute. We've been doing this for such a long time, and we are okay. We are doing great. So let us continue to do so. But the Jewish people are saying, you are not chosen people. We are God's chosen people, and it's our job to do these things. And there is this serious conflict between those different groups. And Paul heard of this news, and he is writing this letter to the Christian church in Rome. And Paul is saying, you know what, actually? We are all sinners. We are all sinners and no one can boast because of the love of Jesus Christ. We are saved. We are forgiven. It's not by our work, so no one can boast, but God saved us. And that's what Paul is giving this message to the church in Rome. And today's Bible passage, Romans chapter 8, Paul is saying that if you believe in Jesus, because we are all Christians, we became children of God, when we believe in Jesus, then we are free from God's judgment. We are born again. We are forgiven. That's the message that Paul is giving to the church in Rome. So now, let's read the Bible. I know there might be some words that you've never heard of before, or you might not understand what Paul is trying to say. That's okay. Just follow along with me, and then we're going to watch the Bible story video. It will give you a better idea of what Paul is trying to say. And after that, we're gonna come back and I will explain what Paul is trying to say. And the message of Paul is not only to those people in Rome, but also to us, to me, and to you as well. So Romans chapter eight, verse one. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. Amen. So now let's watch the Bible story video and let's come back. Over and over in the Old Testament, God's people promised to be faithful. God gave his law to show what he requires, but again and again, the people failed to obey perfectly. They rebelled and turned against God. Even when they wanted to obey God, they could never be good enough, no matter how hard they tried. Their sin made them guilty before God. They needed help. They needed a savior. At just the right time, God kept his promise to send a savior. Jesus came to rescue sinners. Sin is powerful, but Jesus is more powerful. A believer named Paul wrote about sin in a letter to Christians in Rome. Paul said that Jesus was the savior the people had been waiting for. This is what Paul said. Now there is no condemnation, no judgment or punishment for those who have been saved by faith in Jesus. Why? Because the new law, the law of the spirit, has set you free from the old law. The old law was written down 
and it helped you understand that you're a sinner. The old law brought sin and death. God sent Jesus to defeat sin and death so that we could be made righteous by faith in him and live through the spirit. God has put the new law right in our hearts. The new law brings life and peace. So Paul talked about two ways of living. Living by doing what our sinful self wants or living by doing what Jesus wants. Since Jesus frees us from the power of sin, we can say no to sin. God gives us his spirit and power to live in a way that honors God. Look, Paul wanted to be clear. Being not guilty before God doesn't mean that we should keep on sinning. God's spirit in us gives us power to turn away from sin and obey God. When we let the spirit lead us, we prove to be children of God. God doesn't just change something in us. He changes us. God gives us a new heart new desires, and a new way of thinking. This is a miraculous gift from God. We still struggle with sin, but now what is most true about us is not that we are sinners, but that we belong to Jesus. All right, so what Paul is trying to say is this. While Jewish people, you are saying that you are better off than the other people. While non-Jewish people, you are saying that you are better off than the other groups. But you know what, actually? We cannot boast about who we are and what we did because we are all sinners. We sinned against God. We try to keep the law that God gave us, but we cannot keep the law perfectly. So we are all sinners because of our sin. But Jesus died on the cross for our sins and washed our sins away. And that's how we are being justified by God. That's what God calls us that's how we became the children of God it's not because you did something right it's not because you are Jewish people it's not because you did this or you did that don't let those define who you are don't let those things make you think that you're better off than someone else no it's not we are all sinners everyone we have fallen short of the glory of God all people are sinners but because of Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Because of Jesus Christ, we became children of God. So, everyone, always remember that Jesus should be the center of it all. Our heart, your heart, our church. So there shouldn't be any arguments in Jesus Christ. There shouldn't be any conflict or there shouldn't be any fight against you or among you because we are all in Jesus Christ, right? To say. And Paul That's also is saying, that because of Jesus Christ, we are free from sin and death. We are free from judgment. The word condemnation means judgment. So God sets us free from the judgment of death and sin. So now we are free. We are forgiven. We are washed away. That's what Paul is trying to say and emphasizing. And he wants the people in Rome, the Christians in Rome want to know. That's what Paul is trying to say. We're, I know we are all sinners but we are forgiven by Jesus Christ. And no one can boast. And you are not better off than the other person. We are all God's children. We should respect one another as God's big family and children, brothers and sisters in Christ. That's what Paul is trying to say. So for the next uh, several uh, weeks and months, we'll be talking about Jesus, the birth of baby Jesus, and what Jesus did, and what Jesus taught us to do and to follow. So I'm excited, but before we dive into the New Testament story, always remember this Romans story. Paul's message, you are forgiven. Already, you are forgiven, and you are washed away. That's how much God loves us. That's how valuable you are before, before God. All right, have a great time in your house church, and I'll see you next week. So long.